Okay, guys, we got to finish 7-3. So there's just a, two more things that I want to talk about. Um, one is if the directions tell you to solve with inverse matrices. So the directions could say solve using inverse matrices. This just means that we're not going to use the augmented matrix. We're going to use like an equation of matrices. We're going to have like matrix A times X equals B. A is going to be the coefficient matrix that we talked about in the last video. Um, X is going to be the one with the variables. And then B is going to be all of the answers, essentially all the results. So if I'm going to do an example, I would have to give you something like, um, 3x minus 3y plus 6z equals 20. And then I'd say x minus 3y plus 10z equals 40. And then negative x plus 3y minus 5z equals 30. Okay, so I'd have to give you a systems like this. And then we'd have to write our um, matrices of A of x and of B. So I'm going to start with A. I'm going to do all of my coefficients. Um, maybe I'll just write it next to it. So we'll say my coefficients were 3, 1, negative 1, negative 3, negative 3, 3, 6, 10, negative 5. And then I got to do all my variables, which is x, y, and z. It's a 3 by 1 matrix. So I'm going to multiply by x, y, and z. And then that equals my answers, which is 20, 40, 30. OK, again, you still can't put x, y, and z in your calculator. So the only reason we're setting this up is so that we can get it to make sense. So in order to solve for a, if we just had a, x, and b, I would have to move A to the other side to get X by itself. The, in order to move a matrix, its inverse operation would be to multiply by its inverse. So again, I use inverse operation to remind you that it's doing the inverse matrix. So we're going to be multiplying inverse of A times B. You can literally type those in the calculator. You can make matrix A look like this. You can make matrix B look like this, and you can type in the letters A raised to the negative first B, and then you can solve. I'm gonna let you do it, uh, that on your own. If you do that that way, your answer would be X, Y, Z equals, I believe these are correct, 18, 39.3, and 14. You often don't get pretty numbers. So if you get a decimal, it does not mean that you're wrong. You can always plug these numbers back into one of your original equations in order to check. But if I ask you to solve matrix form, I expect to see this, and then I expect to see your answer. Okay. So again, most of this can be done by the calculator. So it's not a ton of work, but you need to know that there are different methods and I'm looking for different things each time. The last thing is kind of bonus. I'm going to teach you this, how to do this by hand. Um, I mentioned taking classes in college. I took a whole, I think two separate semesters on just matrices. And so we did a lot by hand. We're doing like three days total on matrices. So obviously I'm not going to expect you to do a lot by hand, but it's pretty cool. And I might ask you to do it once um, or it's just a good little puzzle practice. So we're going to look at it. So I'm going to do an example. And we're going to solve this by hand. Um, a method that your book says is by Gaussian elimination. This is essentially Gaussian elimination. Gaussian elimination gets you to, oh, there's two S's. Pretend that says two S's. Um, Gaussian elimination gets you to row echelon or reduced row echelon form. This is a method. Um, feel free to try it. Um, but Again, based on this current situation and where we are in the year and just that we're in pre-cal by the calculator is also fine for me. Okay, so this is the example I'm going to give you. We're going to say x plus y plus z equals 4, x minus 2y minus 2z equals 1, and 2x minus y minus 2z equals negative 1. And I'm going to number these with different 
color. So I'm gonna call the first, the red one, one. I'm gonna call the blue one, two, and we'll call the purple one, three. Okay, we're gonna do different combinations of these in order to find new answers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is in order to change um, the second column, I'm gonna change the second column by doing negative one times my first row and then adding that to two. Whatever the last thing is, that's the row that you end up changing. So I'm ending up changing the second row. So I'm gonna do negative one times the first row and add that to two. So I'm gonna do that kind of off to the side, I think. So I'm gonna change all my signs in the red one and I'll just write it in red trying to keep it simple. Negative one, min negative x minus y minus z equals negative four. And we're gonna add that to two, the second equation. X minus two y minus two z equals one. Z equals, okay? This is cool because my x's cancel. I'm left with negative 3y minus 3z equals negative 3. And I'm actually going to put a 0 out front. Before I bring this over, I'm going to do one more step. I'm going to divide everything in 2 by 3. All of these terms can be divided by 3, and that's going to make it easier when I bring it back to my equation. So this becomes 0 minus y minus z equals negative 1. So I'm going to replace. I'm going to rewrite one. I'm going to rewrite three. Got too much there. And then my new two is going to be, oh, where'd my one go? Zero minus y minus z equals negative one. Zero minus y minus z equals negative one. And that's my second one, okay? We're starting to get it. We want it to be in row echelon form or reduced a row echelon form. So that's what we're doing by Gaussian elimination. Okay, so we're starting to get there. I've got a zero in that first spot. Next thing I'm gonna do is try and get um, a zero in this first spot right here. So I'm gonna do, negative two times the first row and then add that to three because that's going to change this one negative two times the first row and add that to three so i'm going to do that over here so my first row becomes negative two x minus two y minus two z equals negative eight and then my third row stays the same and I'm gonna change it. So my two X's cancel, I'm left with negative three Y minus four Z equals negative nine. Seems fine, so I'm gonna replace that. I'm gonna keep one and two the same. And my new three is going to be this right here, which was zero minus three y minus four z equals negative nine. All right, so now I this row right here, or this column right here is good. I've got one, zero, zero. So now I'd love to get zero here and zero here in order to get to reduce echelon form. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, just add two and one together because they're already opposite directions. They're already opposite signs. So I'm gonna do two plus one. Again, the second column is what changes. So I'm gonna change number one. I haven't changed it yet, so I'm pretty excited about this. I'm just gonna keep it as X plus Y plus Z equals four. And I'm gonna add that two to it, which is zero minus Y minus Z equals negative one. My y's cancel and I'm left with um, 1x plus 0, ooh, plus another 0 with the z's equals 3. So now my row 1 is x plus 0 plus 0 equals 3. And this row is actually good if I can keep it this way. 
Before I copy row two, I'm gonna change all my signs to be positive. That helped me last round, but I want positive ones, not negative ones. So now I'm good on row two, except for this Z term. We're gonna to have to change that eventually. And then row three, we've got a couple things to do. I've got zero minus three Y minus four Z equals negative nine. Okay. My next goal, while I wanna change that Z is to get rid of this Y right here. So I want that to be zero. So in order to get that to be zero, I'm gonna multiply row two by what? Three and I'm gonna add that to the third row. I hope we're starting to see some patterns. So row two will be zero plus three Y plus three Z equals negative three. And row three stays the same because I'm adding it to that one minus three Y minus four Z equals negative nine. Combine, so zero stays the same. Now I've got zero y, this is looking good, plus negative one z equals negative 12. Did I do that right? Hello. Sorry about that. Um, okay, I did realize I made a mistake. So this needs to be positive one. I changed all the other ones and I forgot that. And this becomes positive three. So this should become negative six. Now, before I rewrite it in here, I've got negative Z and negative six. Let's just divide everything by negative one and do zero plus zero plus Z equals six. That makes my last row what I want it to be. My first two rows are good, so I'm gonna carry those with me. I'm gonna copy those down. And I'm gonna write my third row, which will be zero plus zero plus Z equals six. And my very last step is to get rid of this guy right here for my second um, equation. I have X plus zero plus zero equals a number, zero plus Y, I need to change that highlighted part for that one to be good. And I've got zero plus zero plus Z equals a number. So I'm almost, almost there. In order to get that, that row two changed, I'm gonna do, um, let's do negative one times row three. Oh, that's messy. Negative one times row three plus row two. Let's see if I can squeeze this guy in and put it all the way over here. Um, so we'll have zero plus zero plus negative Z equals negative six and then row two that was blue, right? Zero plus Y plus Z equals one. Zero plus Y plus Z equals one. So I'm gonna combine these. My Z's cancel, zero plus Y plus zero equals negative five. And so then my final answer, my row one is good. My row three is good. Oh, that's not what I wanted. And then my row two, we just made good. So we're gonna use that. Oh, sorry, notability is not doing well for me today. Okay, let's move this up here. If I were to write this as a matrix, it would be, a, an augmented matrix would be one, zero, zero, three, zero, one, zero, negative five, zero, zero, one, six. If you were to go back to the very beginning and put this in an augmented matrix and then press R, R, E, F in your calculator, you should get the same answer that we did. So you can go back and check your work. Okay, that is enough for now. I wanted to give you a tutorial on how to do it by hand. And I also wanted to talk about inverse matrices because I'm pretty sure that's on your homework. Um, let me know if you have any other questions. Um, please don't get behind. I'm here for you. Bye.